Today, for a fact, we're living in a world full of uncertainties. The Bible says in the last days that knowledge shall increase. It's interesting, we trust science, and yet it appears that science seems to change every day as we make new discoveries. And so what was true yesterday, according to science, is not true today. And if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. But uh, especially dealing with the coronavirus and all the mysterious aspects of it in our world today and what we're being told. But you know what? There is some permanence for the believer who has a faith and a hope in the eternal God. I, I don't know how many times I would need to say this, but I, I, I'm so thankful, one, for you watching today and being a part of this. And I want you to know with all my heart, I believe that God loves every person, every person that's ever been born on planet Earth with an eternal, everlasting love. And God has a special plan and purpose for each and every life. Every human being is of tremendous value to God, and therefore it should be of great value to you and me. And so as we look at this new name of God that we're beginning to meet God by, El Olam, the eternal, everlasting God, as God revealed himself to Abraham, who was a sojourner, who lived in tents, who went from here to here, kind of followed the flocks to wherever the grass and crops might grow to bring sustenance and supply for his family. He was looking for a place to settle down. God had told him he's going to give him a home. Now, when you go to the book of Hebrews, we find out that by faith, Abraham began to realize that his place of permanence was really not on this earth. He was looking for a city whose foundation and builder is God. Now, God is eternal. And for us to comprehend that is beyond literally almost our imagination because we think of things in terms of, of, of time and space and, uh, and, and as such right now. For instance, uh, different cultures in different parts of the world describe uh, such important things as direction or distance or duration with different terms. Like in the United States, we say direction. Okay, we say, oh, he lives out west or uh, it, well, they live down in the south. Or if, if you just go north uh, so many miles, you, you, you'll probably get there. But if you lived in certain parts of the world where they have no conception of the poles, they might say, well, you just need to go in that direction, and they'd point in that direction. In terms of distance, we, we describe it in terms of inches and feet and yards and miles and so forth. But if you lived in certain parts of the world, you might say, well, if you go five trees and cross the river, uh, there you will make and holler, uh, you, you, you will, you'll know you're getting close to where they are if they can hear you. And, and so it's totally different in trying to describe that. You know, so, but there's one term that is very difficult in no matter what language uh, to describe, and that is the word forever. No beginning, no end. And to express that in human terms in any culture, in any language, it's very difficult. It's hard for us to conceive something being forever. Our minds can't really comprehend it. But the Hebrew people had a word for that, and it was El, it was Olam, Olam. So God's not only known as Elohim, the Creator God. He's not only no, El Roi, the God who sees, uh, El Elyon, the um, God Most High. He's known as God El Olam, the Eternal Everlasting God. And actually, as we uh, kind of conclude the study today with this name, it refers to something that moves beyond the vanishing point. It refers to the fact that if you could look backward, you would see God going off the scale beyond the vanishing point in time. If you could look forward, you would see that God would exist beyond the vanishing point. It, it refers not only to the length or the duration of God, but even to his knowledge. His knowledge is beyond the vanishing point, so much that it is, to you and me, a mystery. And so what does it mean to be everlasting, eternal? And that's hard for us because we were born at a certain time, we lived through a space of time, we have a past, we have a present, and we have a future. And that's how we see space and time and everything. But God is eternal. He sees everything all at the same time. And we're going to be talking about that. And if we really meet God as El Olam, 
the God of permanence, the God who is the forever God, and the God who wants you to be in his forever family, oh, my friend, it'll give you great hope. I trust today that you'll go with me on this journey to meet God as El Olam. God bless.